Imagine the shockwaves across the auto industry when a CEO steps on stage and confirms that their most secretive, most talked about engine isn't just a rumor, it's real. That's exactly what Mercedes has done. The company has finally revealed that the Yasa Flux engine exists. An engine once whispered about in hush tones is now front and center. And this isn't just any motor. Early reports claim it's so powerful, so radically different that giants like Tesla, BYD, and Toyota could soon be losing sleep. If this engine makes its way into production cars, the entire game, petrol, diesel, and even today's electric batteries could be flipped on its head. But the big question remains, what makes this engine so special? Is it truly the game changer the industry has been waiting for? Or is it just another flashy promise destined to fade away? And if it really delivers, could Tesla's EV dominance finally be under threat? One thing is certain. Revolutions in car technology don't just appear overnight. They're born from years of research, hidden experiments, and carefully guarded strategies. The Yasa Flux engine is no different. Many assume it surfaced suddenly, but in reality, Mercedes has been quietly working on it for years, out of the spotlight with no grand claims, no hype, just relentless work behind the scenes. That silence was all part of Mercedes' master plan. Let's rewind a bit. Between 2010 and 2015, the EV wave really exploded. And you know, Tesla proved with its early models that electric cars weren't just the future. They were already here. Mercedes, watching closely, understood one thing. If they wanted to stay relevant, betting only on batteries just wasn't enough. They had to reinvent the motor itself. That's when their eyes landed on a small but brilliant British company, Yasa. This startup was already experimenting with axial flux motors, and their early prototypes hinted at a technology that could completely reshape the industry. Mercedes saw the potential, stepped in with support, and by 2019, they took full control of Yasa. That move laid the foundation for what is now being called one of the most disruptive engines in modern automotive history. Mercedes poured millions into the project, gave Yasa full funding, and put hundreds of engineers to work day and night. Over the past decade, this quiet partnership transformed into one of Mercedes' boldest innovations. The company kept the project so secret that even industry experts had no clue. People assumed Mercedes was just focused on luxury EVs, but behind closed doors, they were building an engine that could shift the direction of the auto industry. Another key factor in this master plan was timing. Mercedes never rushed to launch the technology. They knew that if they released an incomplete or weak product, companies like Tesla or BYD would ridicule it immediately. So they tested it thoroughly, thousands of hours of simulations, experiments in every condition until they were fully confident. Only then did they announce it to the world. This move really shows just how much Mercedes has learned from Tesla. You know, Tesla enters the market with a lot of noise, but Mercedes kept quiet, waited for the right moment, and then struck. This is their master plan. Say less, do more. So, what is the Yasa Flux engine? Think about it for a second. Whenever we talk about cars, the first thing that comes to mind is the engine. Once upon a time, petrol and diesel ruled the roads, then the era of electric cars took over. But today, the name-making headlines is the Yasa Flux engine. Mercedes has revealed it, and discussions about it are spreading worldwide. But what exactly is this engine? And why is it considered so special? Let's break it down in the simplest terms possible. Yasa is a British company that originally developed this engine technology before Mercedes took it under its wing, and flux simply means magnetic flow. So, electric motors work on the interaction of electricity and magnets. Normal electric motors, whether they're permanent magnet or induction types, are usually thick, bulky, and, well, pretty heavy. The magic of the Yasa Flux engine is that it's actually very small, lightweight, and, honestly, extremely powerful. Its design is called axial flux. Instead of rotating like a cylinder, 
An axial flux motor rotates like a flat disc. In other words, instead of being a thick cylinder, this motor is more like a thin round plate. For now, the Yasaflux engine will be installed only in luxury and high-performance cars. The biggest reason, honestly, is cost. Being a new technology, it's expensive to produce. Naturally, companies want to install it first in vehicles where high prices are already the norm. But this doesn't mean it will always be expensive. As mass production begins and research costs are recovered, this engine could eventually find its way into more affordable cars. If the flux engine remains confined to ultra-luxury vehicles with six-figure price tags, its impact will be symbolic at best. Its real measure of success will be trickling down to family SUVs and affordable commuter cars. So, what do you think? After exploring the intricate engineering and the immense promise, we arrive at the pivotal question. Does the axial flux motor represent a genuine paradigm shift, a true Kodak moment for electric propulsion akin to digital cameras rendering film obsolete? Or will it ultimately fade into the annals of automotive history as a fascinating but ultimately niche technology, a darling of high-performance enthusiasts and hypercar manufacturers, but never quite breaking into the mainstream? The journey from a brilliant prototype to an undisputed industry standard is a marathon, not a sprint. It's a path littered with the ghosts of superior technologies that failed to cross the chasm. We must remember that the transition from film to digital wasn't just about which camera took a better picture. It was a complete ecosystem upheaval. Digital required new sensors, new storage, new software, and a fundamental rethinking of how we share and consume images. The victory was as much about convenience and connectivity as it was about pure pixel count. Similarly, the radial flux motor's reign is not just about its design, it's about the entire ecosystem that has been built around it. We have, you know, over a century of manufacturing expertise in winding coils and stacking laminations. The supply chains are global, optimized, and deeply entrenched. Billions of dollars have been invested in factories, robotic assembly lines, and tooling specifically designed for this architecture. To displace this is not merely a technical challenge, it's an economic and industrial one of Herculean proportions. This is really the core of the dilemma for axial flux. Its potential advantages in power density and efficiency are, well, undeniable. But can these be translated from the pristine, hand-assembled world of a Rimac Nevera to the brutal, cost-conscious, high-volume environment of a family SUV that needs to be assembled in under 60 seconds? The manufacturing hurdles are significant. The precise arrangement of magnets, the complex winding patterns, and the thermal management at scale present a formidable puzzle that has, until now, kept axial flux motors in the realm of the exotic. This is precisely why Mercedes-Benz's move is so consequential. By integrating Yasa's axial flux technology as a hyper-boost amplifier in their upcoming electric AMG platform, they are not just making a performance statement. They are firing the starting gun on the industrialization of this technology. They are the first major OEM to bet that these manufacturing challenges can be solved at a meaningful scale. They are providing the crucible in which axial flux will be tested, refined, and, if successful, proven to the world. But the race is far from over. The challenges extend beyond the factory floor. There's the question of long-term durability and serviceability. How will these more compact, intensely packed motors fare over a 200,000-mile lifespan? And what about the economic viability? Can the cost per kilowatt be driven down to compete with the relentless cost reduction curves of radial flux motors? Consumer acceptance, too, will play a role. Will the average driver, who may not understand or care about the difference between radial and axial flux, ever notice the benefits in their daily commute? Or will it remain an invisible spec sheet differentiator? This isn't the end of the chapter. It's the thrilling beginning. What are your predictions? Do the advantages seem insurmountable, or are the hurdles too steep? Share your thoughts, your insights, and your forecasts in the comments below. Let's continue the conversation. 
And thank you sincerely for staying with us until the very end of this deep dive into the gears and magnets of what could very well be the next great chapter of electric mobility. The story is still being written. Don't forget to 